Over to you. Thanks, Thanks Nishat. Thanks, Jörg, for sharing. Thank you, Lena, uh, Chandrakant, Jonas. Uh, a wonderful meeting, I think, and great vibe uh, this morning. Really enjoying so far. Um, right, so I'm title, AMR action, we need to do more. So it's a problem we are all talking about which is beyond our control. Let's accept it. It's something that we can only attempt, we can only try and do a little bit. That's really what my pitch is going to be today. And uh, what is it that we can do? Let's not give up hope. What is it that we can do? As a basic scientist, the approach is what I want to talk about, that the approach that a basic scientist can do to do a tiny little bit with a hope that it will make a difference. And so it's in some ways I'm thinking out loud today, really thought, not worrying so much about my data. Uh, we all have lots of data, but uh, we want to talk about how can we move ahead? Um, because that's, that's what we, that will synthesize a concept hopefully at the end of the meeting. So a brief introduction uh, about uh, what I do uh, in the lab. Uh, example of what specific example, a specific case study I'll give you about a study on candida, but then there are many small other examples. And then scratch my head, what do we do from here on? When the career is over, what are, gonna, what are we going to left with? How are we going to contribute to the planetary health through this big problem of AMR? Um, yes, so I have spent my career uh, doing a lot of you know, infectious disease study, AMR study. And that's why I'm here today, retrospective. Many neglected infectious diseases I've studied over the last 20, 25 years. Each one of them, or most of them, have a problem of AMR. You publish literature, which is what you get your promotions through, but that doesn't solve the planetary health problem. And that's really the stage at which I am. Does it all, does it make sense? Um, among all of these, of course, malarial parasite, Many of these, most of these infections have the problem of AMR, and I think you all know what, we are, what, what I'm talking about. What I'll do in the next few minutes is just give one case example, because most of us are going to talk about bacteria at this meeting, so I want to tell you there's a life beyond bacteria. And fungi. I do work a lot on bacterial AMR, but fungal AMR, and then many other protozoan AMR is something that we need to deal with. So we are really scratching the surface. Very quickly, again, I think not uh, glorifying what I've done, but really the failures I'm really highlighting here. I think we've been looking at, we've been attempting to look at the big picture over the years through, I showed you in previous slides, infectious diseases, applying tools, and then publishing papers. And we thought that, wow, here I am, a professor at the University of Science. But then I realized we haven't touched AMR. I haven't touched what's alone in the environment. What about veterinary infections? And so we've been making effort. This is actually a slide that really talks about what I'm trying to do. Antimicrobial resistance, I'm going to tell you a little bit about a small story. Um, uh, we do a lot of surveillance in, uh, in sewage samples environment through a national surveillance program. We do large amount of animal disease surveillance. And then, of course, uh, we all try to predict what the future. Can we predict the next epidemic, next pandemic? And I think in some way, we've, uh, you know, we, are, we are attempting that. And then, of course, the big thing is, in the end, is there a solution? As a scientist, uh, we can do a little bit, and we've made some diagnostic tools. Let me jump into the specifics of AMR and Candida. Candida auris, Dr. Anuj really nicely introduced. He did talk about it. It's a big problem around the world, not necessarily in India. And there have been nice articles, I think, around uh, in newspapers and various magazines. And we did a little bit a few years back. It's a little bit study that was old, but we uh, identified a form of Candida auris, a strain that was novel, MDR. And then, of course, it was it highlighted in various uh, various magazines around the world because it's now the reference genome sequence. We couldn't name it like Adrian did very nicely, Brazil, Brazilians. We couldn't name it, but it's something that is a reference genome for Auris today. And the big picture for those of you who are not into fungi, uh, you know, the uh, Candida, this is a big problem. We all know that. But the, the species uh, dominance has been, there has been a lot of competition in the field. So what was... In other part of the world, you talk about Candida albicans. In India, we used to talk about Tropicalis. Now we are talking about Hemuloni, and that's growing. It is showing drug resistance, a lot of drug resistance. And now we are dealing with Auris. And that's really how, uh, what I'll very quickly tell you, that as a scientist, uh, you can go deeper into it, and we sometimes get lucky finding something that you can make a small difference with. So a patient died in a local hospital with whom we were collaborating. And multi-organ failure, they couldn't figure out antibiotic treatment for failure. We got the sample. 
And that's really how basic sciences do, right? They work with really where the problem is, in hospitals, in the field, in the veterinary segments, and that's really the approach that we've been taking. We got the samples and we've been looking at antibiotic resistance and showed huge, we called it a particular number at that time, but huge multidrug resistance. I'm not going to go into the data, but as I said, the big picture. We sequenced the genome because we didn't know what it's gonna be. We assumed, you know, the Vitek tells you it's human learning, but then the genome sequence revealed that it's actually a cousin, somewhat re unrelated to what was previously described or all this, but a, a very, a very somewhat, uh, uh, you know, phylogenetically related, but not exactly the same. The story is not resolved, I think. We don't know what, it, it is MDR, We've, as I'll show you, we've developed a diagnostic kit for it, which is used for research purpose, and it's in the process of commercialization. We are making a lateral flow assay for it. Originally, this particular RS was, you know, it came out of a ear infection in Japan, it was described, just to tell you that how, how little we know. We have absolutely no idea where the reservoir is. We can all talk about RS, but we didn't know where it came from, what, how frustrating. I'll end this story with the slide that yes, uh, as a basic scientist, you can go to a medical personnel, you can go to a veterinary doctor, get some samples, look at it. In this case, we did for uh, multidrug resistant RS in published literature, and we also developed that diagnostic kit. Can we not do better? What if we didn't get the sample in time? What if we missed that sample? How are we gonna actually find out what resistance is out there in the real world? Do we really need to wait till the patient dies, in, as in this case? How do we get there before this is really the end of the spectrum. So this is where the problem starts, drug resistance develops. This is, I think, what our discussion should be in the next two days. And then we do surveillance. We come up with detection, genome sequencing, and then we come up with diagnostic data. Too late. Last two minutes I want to talk to you about, now I want to go all the way back. Can we actually do attack the source? Really, that's where the big answer is going to be. Hercules task, but we can try, I think we can do a little bit, and that's really what I'm gonna do, and this is what the field trip is gonna be about today. What we are trying to do is to go to veterinary doctors, go to medical hospitals in places where there are no, there's no primary health center well established. Today, of course, we are going to go to a proper primary health center, but our goal really is to go to place remote parts of India, where it takes 10 days, two weeks for somebody to figure out I have fever, I'm really gonna die if I don't find a doctor now. That's the place I want to be, and then address problems. So go to the source. How do we do that? So as a basic scientist, I published papers. I did my diagnostic kit, and obviously that doesn't change the world. This may not change the world as well, but by the end of my career, I may have a little bit of satisfaction. I did a little bit, I did try. We all know about all of this, I'm not going to repeat. How does it all begin? Treatment and diagnosis primitive. People give antibiotics even before diagnosis is out. Big problem, not only in India, but around the world, especially in veterinary diagnostics. And of course, uh, eventually these findings to poultry. I'll, I'll, I'll skip this slide. But this is an effort that we are gonna make now. We talk about the field trip. We've adopted a small, various different actually camps around the Karnataka state where we have access. We hold animal camps where people come with sick animals. And then we isolate samples. We look at what's going on out there. Can't publish this research. We can publish a little bit, but that's not going to be appreciated. But I'll show you what we are trying to do here in the village we'll witness in the afternoon, and then many of us, I seek collaborations. Let's all come together and be unsuccessful, rather than me being unsuccessful alone. It's a one health approach. Now what we do is not go to, not wait for a medical doctor to bring me a sample, not wait for a veterinary doctor to bring me a sample, but go out there in the field. This is a village with well-defined demographic, 5,000 inhabitants, 500 cattle, 550 stray dogs, 30 stray, stray cats, and I'm giving you just a ballpark. So it's all in my control. It's all data documented. My lab, my future lab. We've gotten all the ethical permissions with Panchayat, as it's called, the governance, and now we are trying to see, can we connect all of this? There's a lake nearby. Can we look at the water and is there evidence of antibiotic resistant bacteria out there. Where do they come from? Can we look at actually the soil? Can we look at the environment in general? And that's what we've started doing, getting samples back to the lab and trying to address what. You're gonna see this, but I want to leave you with this incomplete story here. 
I don't want the elephant to shout at me, so I put the elephant picture here to remind me that there will be an elephant out there, and uh, that's a better one than waiting for the dog to bark. But we want to leave a couple of minutes, but I think we really need to think together. Let's not worry too much about what we already did, but I think we need to change the trajectory, and that's really where the success of this fantastic meeting. All of you are experts in your fields. We have the regulatory people, people who understand the big picture. We really need to change the trajectory. Can we do that, please? With that, I'd, I'd be happy to have some comments and suggestions. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rupal, for this inspiring talk. Are there questions? We will have two time for two questions. Yes. OK. The usual suspects are always the same who ask the questions. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was a really interesting talk. And I have a bit of a provocative question. I'm, I'm sorry. No, please. Yeah. It's a bit like when you go to the doctor, if you have headache and they decide to run an MRI, you may found that you have a cyst somewhere. It doesn't mean that you will die from a, from a brain tumor. And when I, I think it's really cool to go to the environment and look what is happening. But I'm a bit afraid that we will find much more and we are looking for, and then where do you put the point on deciding? And it comes back to the question from Adrian. So the fact that that organism is there doesn't mean that it will become pathogenic, pandemic, that it will have any impact. So I think mm -hmm. we need yeah. also to keep in mind yeah. that what we look for, we will find. Now what we do with this information, I think it's still a very open question. Absolutely open. And I I'm think it's something you. to think very carefully when we do this type yeah, of experiment. Yeah, I think uh, you've gone two steps ahead already, uh, Pilar. Uh, I think, so we are not that ambitious yet. We're just going to the field only to find out when there is a problem, when a dog dies. Nobody cares. So why did the dog die? And maybe that's where we will have a small uh, understanding, when an animal dies. Now today in our national reserve, there are lots of uh, exotic animals dying. Nobody understands why that. This is what we want to catch, really. So what you're talking about is a whole different level, I think. But yeah, we just want to deal with what is there currently, which is potentially a problem, which is already killing animals or birds or and creating problems in humans. We'll be happy with that, actually. That's really the motivation there. Yeah, so the, the last question, yeah. is that OK? Yeah. Thank Hi. you, Professor Hi. Datu, uh, from IIIT Delhi. Of course. Congratulations, I think, for getting out there and collecting this very important data. That's the first step. My question is, how do, even we how do we even start thinking about the different time constants at which these interactions happen, and how do we start putting them, them together in these ways? That's why I want to talk to you, because you have so much more experience with you know, organizing data and managing all of this information to make, uh, help us make sense. But yes, of course, I don't have answer to that question. We are only beginning to make an effort and we are selected among the many sites that we worked in, animals, we do animal camps. This is one we think is controllable because we have the governance with us. We have very defined data because of the census that's available because of, you know, so we really can track. So we are going to make, an, make, make, a, make a data table, and we are going to, and that's where really we will need to be interdisciplinary. And uh, I see collaborations, yeah. 